Welcome to Art in the Afterlife, here on Closer Look. Today, we'll be looking at Orpheus and the Sirens. How we view death is almost as important as how we view life. Tomb paintings, sculpture, and votive offerings provide us vital clues regarding how different cultures approach death and how a particular artist manages to provide a single snapshot that captures the spirit of the deceased, preserving it for all eternity. One such example is a stunning terracotta statue group from southern Italy on display at the John Paul Getty Museum in Malibu. It's near life-size and dated to the 4th century BCE. It depicts the Greek hero Orpheus, accompanied by a chorus of sirens. In Greek myth, Orpheus was the son of Apollo and the muse Calliope, who presided over eloquence and epic poetry. Orpheus is not your typical hero. He was more of a rock star in his day, rather than the rock, a musician whose talent for the lyre often mesmerized those who listened, both men and animal alike. It is said he was even able to melt the heart of Hades in order to convince him to release his wife Eurydice from the underworld. As you can see, the seated figure of Orpheus appears to have his hands lifted mysteriously in the air. If you look closely, you can see him holding the remains of a plectrum, or pick, used for tuning or strumming a lyre, which is missing. The statue is hauntingly realistic. You can almost hear the music. Perhaps that is what has attracted this crowd of sirens. Sirens are, of course, mythological creatures, half woman, half bird, who would charm sailors with their beautiful voices before alluring their ships onto the rocks. Their story goes that they were Persephone's handmaidens, and that when she has been abducted by Hades, they search relentlessly for her and ask the gods for wings to carry them across the sea. The gods granted them this wish. They got their wings and more, bird legs, the Roman poet Ovid claims that they were originally the daughters of Melpomene, the muse of singing. They are, of course, immortalized in Homer's Odyssey as trying to lure Odysseus off course with their song. But Odysseus, the man of many wiles, develops the first earplug and sails past. These mysterious creatures also appear in the tale of the Argonauts by Apollodorus, who says that as they sail past the siren shore, Orpheus, to protect them, strikes up a song that offsets the effect of the sisters singing. In this way, just like the episode with Hades, Orpheus's music has the power to overcome death. We believe the sculptural group was made for a tomb. Traces of orange, gold, red, brown, and pink pigments have been found, suggesting that the group was once painted and appeared even more lifelike. Some key questions to encourage close looking. How does the artist portray the young poet? Is he sad? Is he happy? Surprised? What is he doing exactly? And what about the sirens? How does their depiction affect the way we view the piece and death in general? Now, let's take a closer look. What do we see? A young poet appears to be gazing off into space. Would he face those who entered the tomb, served as its guardian? He has a bit of a belly, too, but that's okay. We are, after all, looking forward to Hellenistic sculpture and the interest in embracing the everyday. Now, what is our young poet doing? He's engaged in a concert. Specifically, he's singing. Looking at his belly... He's sucking it in, and you can see that his lips are parted and his teeth are showing. How did Orpheus conquer the sirens? With song. He used their own weapons against them. Ultimately, our poet is overcoming death. Not by force, not by strength, but with song. What does this tell us about the beliefs of the ancient Greeks? Well, that a hero didn't necessarily have to be like Heracles, or Theseus to be great. We all have hidden strengths. What about the sirens? Should we see their transformation into birds as correlating to transforming the body after death? What purpose do you think they would have played? 
If monsters represent a challenge, what is the challenge here? Sirens were believed to have lived on the island of Capri. And what do you think when you take a look at their clothing? You see that the artist has rendered them windswept, tossed aside, as if recalling the windy and rocky shores of the island upon which they haunt. Now let's put everything into context. This sculptural group was made in 350 BCE, and the patron's likeness is still with us today. In that sense, he definitely conquered death. Now note the small holes at the base of each of the statues, designed to help with the release of gases during the firing process. I thank all of you for joining me today on Art and the Afterlife, here on A Closer Look. I look forward to seeing everyone next time.